Okay, we're back for some Tumblr talk. Um, we have done all the prep stuff that we've gone through in the other videos and the hang method and just getting started. So today we are gonna dig into one of my very popular cups that I get asked about all the time by you guys on how to do my bumblebee cup. Um, it's gorgeous, it's so sparkly. It's probably the most searched and looked at item I have in my Etsy shop. Um, and it sells really well. People love it. You can put all kinds of fun things on it and say, you know, queen bee or baby bee or whatever you want, um, it, it, for the label and it comes out so cute. Um, so we, I already started. So if you don't know how to prep a cup, watch my previous video on how to prep a cup. Um, I've got my cup prepped. I have already sanded it down, washed it and base painted it. Now I base paint it gold. Um, that way when I put the gold glitter on, it just really helps just emphasize that shit shiny metal gold uh, look that comes out and sparkles through. Um, that way, if you don't get incredible coverage with your glitter, it doesn't matter because you're gonna have the sparkly behind. So here's your, gonna be your supplies for today. You got your epoxy. Um, I've already got my epoxy ready. Of course, as I always do with Hang Method, I've mixed too much because I've got three more over there that I've got a Hang Method when I'm done with this video. I'm just gonna use the extra on that. So I've got my epoxy. You want your gold base spray paint. You want to have a yellow spray paint. I don't buy the super bright spray paint because it looks too yellow. And you can see, I use this one for this cup and it still comes out really bright. But if you buy those neon yellows or those bright yellows, they're kind of over the top yellow. Um, and you're gonna tone it down anyway with your alcohol inks. Um, so I have alcohol ink, my gold glitter, yellow paint, gold paint ready, my weeding tool, little scissors, you'll see why in, in, the, in a bit. And we've got the gloves that I'm gonna wear to do the hang method. And I've got my stickers printed out for the honeycomb, my stickers printed out for the bumblebees and flowers. You're gonna need a makeup sponge. Uh, this is how I apply my alcohol ink for this. Um, and then you will use, um, I just use my little scrap pieces of my contact paper or my transfer paper, what they call it, um, to do the honeycomb. And if you like this look, but you also wanna try it with the wood grain, which I've done and you can see it here, I have switched to using wood grain, I mean wood stain, actual wood stains, because a big reason, um, the a lot of the wood grain colors in the alcohol inks will turn green when you seal them or put them under epoxy. So you can see this one. I actually ended up liking it because it looked kind of like mossy look, um, but it's got the green tint in these, and this is the one I used um, uh, alcohol inks with, and it did. When I uh, seal sprayed it, it turned green. Um, not a lot of green, but just enough to where I'm like, that was not the look I was going for for this customer. Uh, so I had to redo it and do one more similar to this, which I used wood grain stains. And you apply it just like you would alcohol inks. The way you brush it or sponge it or whatever your uh, tool of choice to doing your uh, wood grains, that's how you would do it just with the same wood grain. But today we are gonna stick with just the basic one um, and how to get it to like this honey look with the honeycomb. Okay, so I am gonna hang method this uh, get this all done with the hang method and then I will be right back with you guys and we will glitter it. So the cup has been uh, covered with the hang method and then we poured the glitter all over it. Um, I did it over a plate. Uh, I thought I was recording when I did it to show you guys and apparently the record did not turn on. So I'm coming back just to show you guys this part of the method, uh, this part of the this stage of the cup this one has, this is the one I worked on and I had it spray painted gold, then did the hang method of epoxy over the top, sprinkled all the glitter on. And the most important tip you're gonna take from this part of this stage is that when the glitter is on there, you put these cheesy little gloves on um, and you're gonna press the glitter down. Um, this one's still a little bit tacky because um, I did it this morning starting the video for you guys. Um, so it's still a little tacky and it'll push down, but it's this way you get all the glitter to lay down flat. And that way you don't have to put as much epoxy on it to get coverage on this glitter. It's, um, you're just going to do one heavy coat on your turner and then a thin, and then sand it just a touch, let that cure, then sand it just a touch and then put the final uh, hang method layer over the top to bring it back to being shiny and then start the next process. But the important part is after you do the hang method, apply your glitter and then press it down. And when you're pressing it down, it won't do it now because it's pretty stuck on there from um, curing for the day, but a little bit's gonna fall off. Um, that's okay and there'll be some stuck to your glove. That's okay. You've got so much and because you gold base painted that and you used fine glitter as well as chunky, even if some falls off, you still have really good coverage because of that shiny underneath spray. 
um, you get really good coverage and it's really pretty still. So there is that and we are going to move on to the next step. And I hope I cl cleared that up. I'm sorry that I missed it on the first round, but I hope you guys got that little tidbit of information about pressing the glitter down onto that hang method. You do it right away, you don't wait at all. You put the hang method on, put the glitter on, and then press it down. All right, we are gonna keep on moving. Actually working on one of these cups for a customer. Um, and so that it's very convenient because we don't have to wait for this one to cure. So normally I would let that one cure for like eight hours, nine hours, and then I would put a layer of epoxy on. Um, this one is already epoxied. This one has been one layer of Turner epoxy and that's to give it a nice thicker layer to cover the glitter really well. Then I did one round of hang method on this cup um, just to give it a little bit extra coverage and make it pretty smooth for this next stage. Um, and we are gonna now apply the, uh, the uh, honeycomb. So you can do honeycomb. What I did, I just went on Google, found a Google, S what I put in was a honeycomb SVG, pops up a, a good selection of them. I imported one into DS, cleaned up. Uh, you can do it, I do big or small. As you can see, today I'm gonna do a small because that's how this customer wants it, but I do it big or small. So this is one of the big ones with the big, big honeycombs on it. And this wood grain one was done with smaller honeycombs. They both look good, they both look beautiful. It's just preference of whether you like big or little for the honeycomb. Today we're gonna do the little. I'm gonna put that off to the side. So I use my transfer paper. Um, and what I do is I just take the transfer paper and I rub it on and I just grab a few of them off my little sheet. Oops, they don't want to come. When they don't want to come like that, I just bend it from the back and push them on and come off. So there we go. Um, I reuse the uh, transfer paper so sometimes it stops being as sticky and it doesn't hold as well. So very important with honeycombs, and I have learned this from a beekeeper, is you want your points to go up and down. So you want these honeycomb, I'll show you on the big one, to point up and down like this. That's how it is in nature. Um, they build them with the point up and down. So if you put it sideways and then you sell this to a beekeeper, they're not going to like it. <laughs> um, I've already got some on this cup from the previous time I was just chatting with you guys and thought I was recording. So we're just going to continue on and add them on here and I dot them around. And what I was saying in the last video of what I wasn't actually videoing is that I avoid going down over this ridge. The reason I avoid that is because when you go over that ridge, the, the vinyl has a really hard time. It doesn't like that curve and it will lift up, which is not really a big deal because you're gonna lift it up anyway with a peekaboo. However, um, with this one, you're gonna put these on and then spray paint it. And if it lifts up at all, that spray paint gets up and underneath there. And it's really, really hard to fix it. Um, I've tried it with a Q-tip and um, all different types of ways and it just does not work. Um, so I literally add every single one of these honeycombs, even this, this little single guy, he'll find a home. He'll go right there. But again, avoid this going over this ridge and make sure you put your honeycombs pointing up and down. All right, I'm gonna finish up putting these on. And you guys don't have to watch me do this tedious process and we will come back. All right, I just want to tell you guys a couple little things that I was thinking of as we were sitting here. I completely breezed over the step. Um, so when we do the epoxy method, no, the tumbler turner and we put the layer of epoxy on, you want to, after that one's cured, you want to s gently sand it down and knock off any of the sharp little points that some of these little glitters might be doing. And that's why I then did the hang method over the top to get it shiny again. So I did the layer of um, Turner epoxy to get a nice thick layer over it. Then I just, with a 220 grit sandpaper, just breezed over it to make sure any little sharp points or any big bumps were knocked off and cleaned off with a 220 grit. Then I did the hang method. Well, I cleaned it, put, put it on my uh, drying rack and did the hang method over the top. That's where I got a nice smooth finish to be able to put these uh, stickers down on and then it sat for 48 hours, so two days, about two days um, after that. So that way you have a nice smooth finish. Um, you don't have to worry about sanding later because if you don't do that uh, step, when you put these on and then you spray paint over the top, you're gonna see all those little bumps and all those issues underneath uh, the paint, they're gonna all show. You can't hide them once you're at that point. So you wanna make sure you sand uh, between before you get to this stage and then do the hang method and get one thin coat of the top to make it shiny and soft and smooth and then apply your stickers. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna take this outside. I'm gonna leave you guys for a minute and I'm gonna go spray paint it and coat it uh, yellow and we will be right back. 
Okay, guys, I'm back. We've got the uh, cup painted. Uh, you can kind of see through right here and see where those stickers are underneath the paint. This one, I did three coats of very thin paint. Um, I do it thin because you don't want any drops. Um, so the thinner, the better. And you're gonna use, um, at this point, we're gonna now remove, oh no, I'm sorry, at this point we are gonna do our honeybee, um, the honey part, um, and make it look like honey. So we're gonna do that with alcohol inks. So you're gonna need your alcohol ink. I use orange because the cup's already yellow. I've, I've, I've used yellow on it. It just makes it very neon. Um, and it, I don't like the look it gives. You can try it if you like, um, if you want a brighter cup, but this ends up coming out pretty bright even with this, with this orange. So um, what I do is I use my makeup dauber. I put my tool back. I use my makeup dauber. Sorry, you can hear my turners are going full steam ahead behind me and they groan. So I put on some music to try to drown it out, but it's not working. Um, you take it right on the end of your makeup sponge and I blot it around and it looks really orange when you start, but you just keep going and I just go crazy. And I make sure I get, you wanna get down in the lines between, that way they are done as well. And I just go to town. And then reload, take another section. And this is what kind of gives it that honey look instead of it just being a flat yellow this kind of gives it that the movement within the color as you can see on the one i've already finished so it's not just plain yellow and this one i'm using is pinata but you can make an orange your own orange alcohol ink you don't need to use a brand name you can do it yourself i like the way this one looks it actually looks different on the cup than it does under the epoxy I was happy with it anyway the first time I did this, but it turned out even better once the epoxy touched it and kind of moved it around a little bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just do this all over the cup and then I will come back and show you guys the next step. I'm not gonna make you guys sit and wait for it. We're back, I've got the whole cup done. An important tip, because you probably won't see me do this part, I'm not gonna epoxy on camera. Um, but what I do is I don't actually seal this once I get the stickers and stuff on because um, I want the epoxy to move this orange color around a bit. Um, so I don't seal. And that actually, I like the way it looks. I haven't had a problem with it messing with my glitter or my stickers. Um, but again, it's kind of trial and error and what you guys like and what you don't. Um, so here we're gonna start removing these. I'm here I'm finished with that. Um, we're gonna start removing these stickers. I put something on the bottom of every single one of the cups I make. Um, I think it's a fun little detail. Um, you can see on this one. It's just a little surprise and I don't put this in, if I'm listing it somewhere or selling it like on Facebook or wherever I'm listing it and putting it for sale, I don't tell the customer that there's something fun on the bottom. I just photograph it just like as it is. And so when they get it, um, and the customers absolutely love the idea of this. I don't put my logo or my label on the bottom. Um, this one you can see, this is normally what I do on my bee cup. I do a honeycomb on the bottom with a little bee. It's just a fun little detail that people absolutely love. So I've just continued doing it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get in there with your weeding tool. I'm sorry, Bane, stay. I have, my dog is in the room with me. Um, you're gonna take your weeding tool and you are gonna hook underneath that very shallow, you don't wanna go deep because you don't wanna gouge into your epoxy, and you're gonna hook those stickers. And I do this just like I'm weeding and I stick all my stickers somewhere. And you just very carefully grab and pull. Now, if you hadn't waited the 24 to 48 hours to do this, these stickers do not wanna come off. It is a total pain. So you can see I'm just getting in there and getting shallow and they're peeling right off because that epoxy was fully cure. It, there's no extra grip from the um, tackiness of the epoxy. If you do scratch the epoxy just a little bit with your weeding tool, it's all right. Don't stress. When you put the next layer of epoxy over the top, that scratch will go away. However, if you slip and scratch on this paint, it's really hard to hide it. So what I do is I get my dauber, uh, makeup brush, the sponge or whatever you call it, and I put more alcohol in it. I really dab hard and kind of try to move that area and try to hide that scratch. Um, but as long as you wait for this epoxy to be pretty cure, you won't have a problem with the, the uh, I don't at least have a problem with it slipping out and sliding and scratching the rest of the cup. 
when the time that I tried to do it that I only waited, I would say eight or nine hours and I put the stickers on, I scratched the crud out of that cup because I was working so hard trying to get the stickers off and I was determined to pull them off. Um, and I just kept scratching the cup because I couldn't get them off and it would slip out and slide and get all over. So that was a mess, but I was determined not to uh, have to strip that cup and make it work. And it did, it just took a lot of extra work. I might as well have just started the cup over. Um, but here we go. So this is just what you do, is you cut all those pieces out. I mean, pull all those pieces off and it's like a peekaboo and it's gonna show over oh, there and I slipped right there. But I luckily didn't slip past the edge of the, the tape. Um, so this is gonna be a peekaboo is basically what it is. Um, but your honey is created with that orange alcohol ink over the yellow paint with the peekaboo. All right, I'm gonna finish pulling these all off and I'll come right back for you guys. So we are all done, pulled them all off, got them off. And we are gonna move on to putting on these stickers. So I just went on Google and found, I just searched for honeybee and queen bee until, and I just put in all these different searches for honeybee SVG, queen bee SVG, until I found a bee that I liked. This one, I just like that it looked super realistic. So I just realized I have this all still stuck to me. Um, they look really uh, realistic. Um, they're a lot of fun and there's some like cartoony bees and whatever but I wanted this to actually look like a like a honeycomb um, and then my original design is with these pink flowers they're just all the same flower just I every when I apply it I spin them and turn them so they don't look quite the same um, and then I had somebody request once a uh, red flower so I have some as well and I just print these out on uh, uh, sticker paper um, you could do them on white water slide I wouldn't do clear water slide on this because you wouldn't be able to see them um, as it is this uh, sticker paper, unless you seal it well, it will go um, like transparent. If you look really, let's see if I can find one on one of these cups. If you look really close here, you can see the wood grain actually through the sticker paper. So it almost does act like a white water slide, but it's kind of like a mix between white water slide and uh, clear water slide. So it's not as see-through as clear water slide, so you can still see the image really well, but it's not as um, opaque as the white water slide. So you can see in some of these like a little bit of the um, glitter from behind it. That, that was the best example I think on that wood grain where you really see the grain behind the flower, but I actually kind of like the way that looks. It looks a little vintage and fun. If you don't like that look, what you do is in design space, because I do this sometimes with my sunflowers, with my bright, bright cups, cups, and I really want a very prominent sunflower. I don't want it see-through. You take, you would take this in your design space, and you would uh, print it out once as a print and cut. And like I said, I use it on sticker paper. And then you would go back to that exact same page, and switch it from print and cut to cut. And then I put in white vinyl and I cut white vinyl out that's in this exact same shape. And you can lay this over that white vinyl. So that way, even if it does go um, see-through, um, like transparent when you get the epoxy on it, it will have a white backing so it won't look any different. Um, and that is what I do with my brighter, more like aggressive uh, flowers when I put them on as I back them with the white vinyl. Or if I'm putting on like somebody's decal logo or something, that's what I do. I do use white water slide, but in this instance, it's, it is, pricey for water slide and these are so cheap it's like eleven dollars for like 150 sheets I don't know it's really inexpensive so when you go to apply these bumblebees I use you're gonna well this is when I said you guys are gonna need a little pair of scissors in the beginning and this is where that's gonna come into play when you epoxy and I don't want to forget to tell you guys about that oh when you print these out before you do this if you haven't used used the print and cut uh, feature on your D, uh, design space DS in a long time I would calibrate it um, and you find the calibrate if in the top left corner of the Cricut design space right next to where it says I think it says Cricut and it has those three lines next to it you click on those three lines in the drop down menu it'll say calibrate click on that follow the directions calibrate your machine that way it knows and it's recalibrated to cut exactly around the B and it's not offset. Some, sometimes when it's not calibrated correctly, it will offset and you'll get a lot of this white from around the B um, because it's not calibrated correctly. Um, same with the flowers, if it'll get a lot of white, um, which, you know, it kind of, like I said, it goes transparent, so you don't really see it too much, but 
you definitely want to calibrate. So I've said that enough. Calibrate, calibrate, calibrate. Okay, so then you have these tiny little uh, scissors. You're going to use those um, once you get epoxy on. And I just realized I don't have my tweezers, ah, but I can do this without tweezers, I guess. Normally I use tweezers to pull up my bumblebees, but I left them sitting over in my workspace. Um, so I'm going to just use my weeding tool here. And I just kind of push underneath. As you can see, I'm pushing the legs up. I don't want to just lift them up and pull them because you will rip the legs off because they're so fine and thin. And I carefully, this is where I would normally be holding it with tweezers. And then you're going to find, I overlap it into the honeycomb because it looks more natural and I like the way it looks. So I'm going to just start placing these on. And like you said, you can see a little bit of white around here, but not as much. If it hadn't been calibrated, it'd be a lot worse. Um, and again, it's just peeling underneath. And like I said, you can do this with white water slide, but it would take a long time, a lot of water slide paper, and it is more expensive, so it adds that price to your cup. So I am just gonna stick these around. I also do the flowers. I'm gonna uh, pl plop those around. I'm gonna cover the cup in the stickers for you guys, and I'll be right back. So I've got the whole cup uh, covered in the stickers now. You can see I put quite a few on there. I have generally found that people like more little extras on this one than less. Um, like I said, I'm not going to seal this cup before I epoxy it, so this will kind of actually move these around just a little bit. Not a lot, it doesn't do a lot, but just enough to make it blend a little bit more. And I have not had an issue with it affecting my stickers at all. Uh, you might, I hope not. Uh, so what you're gonna use these little scissors for is when you epoxy it, you're probably gonna rub it and move the epoxy around. Occasionally, a little antenna or a little foot will stick up through the epoxy, and before I, then I just get in there real close. These have been in the epoxy a million times, and I just snip the tip off that's sticking up and poking out, um, because sometimes just with the rubbing and getting the epoxy on, you'll lift up some of these little small pieces. Um, so I just snip them off. Usually it's not too bad. It's usually just the tip or the edge, and I just snip that off so I don't have to deal with that later and try to cover it and sand it down and all that. Um, again, same thing with the stickers as with the um, peekaboos is you don't want to put anything over this rim for the same reason. The sticker paper will lift. You'll have a pain in the butt dealing with it. Um, some of my first cups, you can see I tried it, but I had a lot of issues and had to put a lot of epoxy on them. Um, that's why I actually still have this one. I'm not going to sell this one because this is one of my first ones and you can see even right there. It works and I put this bee over the lump, but I had to do a lot of extra epoxy and a lot of extra sanding, and I learned my lesson on that cup. So that is my own personal cup. Um, so this one will now be epoxied and sent out for delivery, um, and it will be gorgeous, and I hope you guys learn some stuff. I hope you give you some great tips. Use your little manicure scissors to pick up the um, extra little bits that might stick up. Make sure you calibrate before your printing cut. Uh, make sure it cures for 24 hours before, at least 24 hours. I wait 48 before you apply the, the peekaboo stickers. Um, and in the beginning, I guess a little tip is to make sure when you apply your glitter over the hang method to press it down with a glove so you get it nice and flat so you don't have to use as much glitter, uh, epoxy so it's not as heavy. Um, also remember you guys can do this with the um, uh, wood grain. Just paint it white instead and do your wood grain. I do my wood grain with um, actual wood stain. You can get these little jars, tiny jars. I got these at Home Depot. I think they have them at Lowe's as well. They're only a couple bucks, maybe three, four bucks um, for each color. And I just got a selection of lights and darks and I just go to town with my paintbrush. I don't do anything too crazy with them. People know exactly what it is. Wood grain, it's pretty easy. Um, but you can do that method instead of this honey look. But like I said, once it goes under epoxy, it always starts out looking like this. And once it's under the epoxy, it will look more like this. The orange kind of bleeds a little bit, which makes it the yellow a little bit brighter and the orange kind of not so splotchy. And you just get this real cool um, honey like look. It just kind of looks like a textured, like they're almost like in the honey on the honeycomb. It's, it's, it's a really cool cup. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. I hope this works for you guys. I'd love to see some of your examples. So post them, tag little Lee and Rose in it. I would love to see your creations. Um, have a great day guys and check us out. We're going to keep posting more videos. If you like the video today, give us a thumbs up, comment down below about something. If you have any questions, we're here to answer. Um, also subscribe to our channel. We're going to keep putting out some real unique cups. Um, I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of creative ideas I haven't seen done yet. 
Um, I'm just trying to walk through these first videos as some of the basics. I threw this video in here because I know a lot of you are waiting for this um, tutorial. It, you've asked me for months to get this out. I'm just sucking it up and getting it done for you guys today. But I will be doing some of the more basic stuff um, so that way new uh, Tumblr makers can kind of catch up to speed and then we will jump right into some of the more detailed designs like the dripping glow, um, like it looks like glow foam out of a radioactive barrel. It's really cool. Um, and we're gonna also do, let's see, what are some of the other fun ones? I'm gonna show you how to make a dragon's eye onto your dragon cup. Um, I got a lot of cool ideas, guys, um, so they'll be coming at you.